Congressman Mark Pocan of Madison, Wisconsin. I believe he is in Iowa. He has endorsed a candidate for president of the United States, but he's on the ground to tell us what's happening. Congressman, thank you so much for being with us. Oh, thanks, Jefferson. Glad to be here. What do you think we really need to be watching? And I want to start, you can say something you want about Iowa, uh, but I want what do you are really watching when it comes to the State of the Union uh, that we're also going to be hearing this week? Yeah, well, I, that's going to be uh, tomorrow. I think today uh, we have two things people have their eyes on. One is the closing arguments in the impeachment trial, and uh, what happens in Iowa really does have a huge uh, effect going into the rest of the primaries. And uh, there's some people who think you might have a record turnout uh, today in Iowa. Uh, there's at least four people who uh, you have to get 15 percent to be viable. There's four people who, by based on the polls, could do that. So it's a, a lot of energy, a lot of excitement here on the ground in Des Moines. And then tomorrow, uh, you know, I assume the president, but of course, I, I'm always wrong. And I try to predict what, what a normal person would do. Uh, but you think you'd want to pivot and show that, you know, he's either able to work in a bipartisan way or uh, highlight some uh, at least perceived accomplishments. But, you know, uh, if the impeachment trial is not done, you never know what Donald Trump might do. And I do want to talk to you about Iowa. Give us your take. Uh, how does potential potentially record turnout impact our ability to prognosticate do you think that favors any particular candidate do you just mean do you just think it's going to be hard to predict anything or do you think it makes certain things more likely well the the big four the most recent poll and and it was a weird poll with the des moines paper where uh they had to not put it out because uh, some people might not have been asked all the names or had all the names pronounced correctly to them. Uh, But then the information leaked. And in that poll, Bernie was uh, in first place. Elizabeth Warren was actually in second place uh, and then followed by um, Buttigieg and then Biden. And then uh, Klobuchar is probably in the fifth place, at least based on polling. But when you look at the last several polls, uh, Bernie's been up or down. Uh, Biden's been up or down. Uh, so it really is kind of anyone's guess. And a poll doesn't necessarily accurately represent people who go to a caucus because a caucus is a two or three hour experience. It's not like he's going in and voting. Uh, you have to be there and you have to be a part of this. So they count you and then allocate the delegates based on that count. So it is a very different animal. But, uh, boy, I'll tell you, everyone is here. Um, There's just a lot of energy on the ground, and uh, it'll be very interesting. And hopefully it's not a late, late night and we'll get some results. On a scale of 1 to 10, Congressman, how dumb is it that we pick a president starting out with Iowa, uh, Iowa caucuses? You think it's 1 being genius, 10 being (laughs) what the heck are we doing? Yeah, you know, it, it's interesting because even um, before we changed some of the rules the last time, which I supported, you know, taking away some of the power of the superdelegates, you know, we have a mix. We have open primaries, we have closed primaries, we have caucuses. So each of those is a, its own different animal, right? New Hampshire will be the first primary, um, but then there's open primaries and closed primaries where in some closed primaries you've had a register months in advance and you can only vote in your party. So it, it's kind of a weird process overall. But uh, generally, I think what I heard in the last several decades, uh, there's only been a couple times that whoever won Iowa didn't go on to take the nomination. And I think that's why people pay attention to what's happening today. Yeah, it clearly matters. Let's ask about impeachment. Was there anything you were watching for, anything that you learned? And I don't necessarily mean new evidence. I saw the vote where they kept out new evidence. But anything in the dynamic that you have learned or a new reflection you have had from the Senate deliberations, if we can call them that? Well, I just think there's a, a, so many uh, senators who are afraid of the power that Donald Trump has within the Republican Party, uh, that they're afraid of primaries, they're afraid to upset folks within the base. But because of it, I mean, without question, there's going to be more information that comes out, and I just don't know how uh, they're going to answer some of this later because they wouldn't take any witnesses or documents now. The case that you made, I've heard this argument lots of times. It's one of the dominant arguments. Uh, and, and generally, I would track the Trump critique this way. And by the way, I critique the primary Trump critique. I think it's insufficient. I don't like it very much. But I say it so you can blow me, you know, tell me where I'm dumb. Sure. The, uh, where they say, Donald Trump does so much inappropriate behavior. He's, he's, so, he's so naughty. And he's, so, and he's such a dumb dumb. He shouldn't be president. But these Republicans are so afraid of him because of the power he has in the Republican Party. They stick with him. I think there is a different critique. And I think Lamar Alexander's response on uh, Meet the Press was 
an example that illustrates the importance of that. Uh, where I think the different critique, I think the more important critique, is that Donald Trump is immoral and a president who is doing bad things for the country and that he is supported by a movement that wants those things to happen. It's not that they're merely afraid of him. It's that they are in cahoots with him to help make bad things happen. And therefore, the whether or not he's a dum-dum, we know that he is in some ways and he isn't in other ways. That analysis is less interesting to me now. And the reason I use the Lamar Alexander example is not just that it's recent, but also is this guy's not running again. I don't know what he's afraid of. Is he, is he afraid of history? Was he, do you think that Lamar Alexander's vote was an indication that he was afraid of something, some compromise, some, I don't know, book deal, some lever that was still there unseen? Or do you think it is a better example that cutting taxes for rich people taking away benefits for middle class and poor people and empowering anti-democratic jurists to put democracy, in fact, in chains is the joke. And he's in on that joke. What say you? I, you know, I think it's a mix. I mean, when Paul Ryan was speaker, clearly he had two goals uh, his entire career in Congress, to cut taxes for the wealthiest and to try to take away uh, what they call entitlements, which we call things like Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid. And he accomplished uh, one of them quite well by getting the big tax break. So you're right. In many ways, they do believe in some of the awful ideas. I think Donald Trump, though, also does some things that are a little bit dangerous because uh, he thinks he's going to make a profit personally, he and his family. And those decisions, I don't think they necessarily agree with, but they're still afraid to take him on because the president's really overtly racist actions really mobilize a certain constituency within the Republican Party. So I think you're right. Part of it is, you know, Paul Ryan, it was probably his happiest day in his life uh, was he was able to cut taxes for the wealthiest, not tax reform, just cutting taxes for rich people. Uh, but at the same time, I don't think, you know, a lot of the actions he does don't benefit the country, don't benefit the Republican Party. They benefit Donald Trump and his family and his businesses. And I think those things are much harder for them to justify. But again, they won't take him on because I think there is a factor of being afraid of him. 